السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Uh, this is the third uh, uh, presentation on analysis of statically determinant B. Today we'll be solving two examples. Uh, the first one, as you could see, it's uh, uh, the beam, this beam ABCD, it has an overhanging cantilever portion, second part BD. Uh, first, we calculate the reactions. So we take sigma moment about A equals 0. So 10 times 6 times 3 plus 5 times 2 times 7 plus 8 times 7 minus 6 VB equals 0. So VB equals 51 kilonewton. Sigma Fy equals 0, which is 51 plus VA minus 6 times 10 minus 5 times 2 minus 8. So VA equals 27 kilonewton. So now if we take a section right to the support, uh, right of support A, simply the shear force is equal to the reaction, which is 27 kN, and the moment is 0. If we move to the left of B, and as you mentioned before, you must take a section before and after each support, and before and after each concentrated load, and you must take a section at each change of loading or each change in the structure. لازم ناخد section قبل كل support وبعد كل support. ولازم section قبل كل concentrated load وبعد كل concentrated load. ولازم ناخد section عند بداية ونهاية أي حمل جديد أو أي تغيير في الأحمال أو أي تغيير في structure نفسه. But taking a section left of B, V is equal to 27 minus 6 times 10. This is minus 33 kilonewton. Right of B, it's 27 minus 6 times 10 plus 51. So this is 18 kilonewton. And the moment is 27 times 6 minus 10 times 6 times 3 equal minus 18 kilonewton meter. If we draw the shear force diagram now, after, of course, we need to take a section uh, to the left. Of C and another one to the right of C. The section to the left of C will give us V equal 27 minus 6 times 10 plus 51 minus 5 times 1. The section to the right of C will give us 27 minus 6 times 10 plus 51 minus 5 times 1 minus 8. So the one before is 13 kilonewton and the one after is 5 kilonewton. Then the moment is, it's for us, of course, it's easier to take. A section of the moment and look to the other side because it, it's the side that has less number of loads. So simply m equals minus 5 times 1 times 0 0.5. So this is minus 2.5 kilo newton meter. And our check here is that we look at the end E and calculate V, it must be 0. At in this case, at the end of a cantilever portion, V should be 0, and it was 0, which is 27 minus 6 times 10 plus 51 minus 5 times 2 minus 8 equal 0 kilonewton. So that means that our steps are correct. And to calculate the location of the maximum bending moment, we will again use the concept that there is a differential integral relationship between the bending moment and the shear force diagrams. So the bending moment is the integral of the shear force, and the shear force is the derivative of the bending moment. So the maximum bending moment occurs when V equals 0. This is a conceptual issue. You need to, you must know it by heart. So 27 over X is equal to 33 over 6 minus X. So X is 2.7 meters. So now the maximum bending moment is equal to 27 times 2.7 minus 10 times 2.7 times 2.7 over 2, which is equal to 36.5 kilonewton meter. And as we mentioned previously, uh, in the British uh, system uh, of drawing the bending moment, and since Egypt was a British occupied uh, country, we used that system, which I believe it makes sense that you draw the bending moment always on the tension side. So you, the positive is down, the negative is up. Why is that? Because the part that will be in tension 
will be down. And this is very important if you are designing a reinforced concrete member because if you are placing the bars, the steel bars, you will place it at the side of the tension. So it is easier for you to figure when you look at the bending moment to figure where are you putting your steel. Okay? This is the major reason why people do it this way. So yeah, for the shear force, you draw the positive up and the negative down. For the bending moment, we draw the positive down and the negative up. Because we are talking about the tension side, we draw it at the tension side, not at the compression side. And again, when looking at this thing, the very easy check to do is to compare the area under the shear force diagram to the value of bending moment. If you want to make a check, what you have done, simply calculate the area of the first triangle, which is 27 times 2.7 over 2, the first triangle of the shear force diagram. So if this area, if you calculate 27 times 2.7 over 2, this is exactly equal to 36.5 kN, which is the value of the bending moment at this point. So that confirms that we are doing things right. So you have more than one tool as a check to be done. Let's move to the second example. The second example is a little bit more complicated. Here we have the case of having an intermediate hinge. So you have a, 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 a fixed support at A. And AB could exist on its own, you could say. It's a cantilever. Then point B partially supports the beam BCD. So it is a part of it is supported on B, and the other part is supported on support C. So, first calculating the reactions, we take sigma MB and we look right, okay, this is equal to 0, so simply we have 12 times 27, and 27, this is the resultant force of the triangular load on acting on CD, plus 54 times 7, and 54, this is the resultant force of the rectangular load. Of 9 kips per feet minus 10 RC and as you could see 10 is simply 6 plus 4 so now RC is equal to 70.2 kips while Sigma FY equals 0 70.2 which is the number that we have just calculated for RC plus RA minus 10 which is the concentrated load, minus 54, which is the resultant of the rectangular load, minus 27, which is the resultant of the triangular load, all of that is will give us that RA is equal to 20.8. And again, nobody in an exam will give you the 54 and the 27. Nobody will give you the resultants of the rectangular or the triangular loads. You need to figure it out on your own. So... This, the 27, how did we calculate it? 27, this, uh, this was simply the 9 times 6 over 2. So 9 times 6 over 2, this is 27. The 54 was simply 9 times 6, this is 54. And it, the 54, the location of the 54 is at 3 feet from C, which is simply the half of the distance. However, the location of the of the resultant load for the triangular load is one third the distance from the base, which is the distance from the base. The total distance was six feet, so one third of it is two feet. Then, if we take a section just to the right of support A, V equal R A equals twenty point eight kips. Then, another section left of the concentrated load we will get the same V, and M is equal to 20.8 times 4, minus 148, minus 64.8 kips feet. However, a section between the 10 kips or, and point B, anywhere in between, whether you just been just before B or just after the 10 kips, it will give you the 20.8 minus 10. This, will, this is your shear force. So the shear force here is 10.8 kips. And M is simply 20.8 times 10 minus 10 times 6 minus 148. This is equal to 0 kip feet. And this is a very important check that you need to do here. Because that means that because this is 0, 
you must get it as a zero because this is an intermediate hinge. If you didn't get a zero here, there must be something wrong. And if you didn't get a zero here, you should stop. You should revise because this is a conceptual mistake if you didn't get a zero here. Okay. That means that you don't understand the basic concept of an intermediate hinge that it doesn't transfer bending moment. At the beginning of the distributed load, V is still equal to 20 minus 20.8 minus 10, which is 10.8 kips. The moment now is 70.2 times 6 minus 50, 54 times 3 minus 27 times 8, which is equal to 43.2 kip feet. Now if we take a section left of support C, we'll find that V is equal to 20.8 minus 10 minus 54. So this is minus 43.2 kips. However, just to the right of support C, V is equal to 20.8 minus 10 minus 54 plus 70.2. This is 27 kips. And again, another check to be done. And M is equal to minus 27 times 2 minus 54 kips. Kip feet. And at the end, the V must be zero. This is our second check here. Okay, and as you could see here, the shear force remains stagnant between the 10 kips and the beginning of the new distributed load because no any other loads have came here, so the shear force became the same. And if you could see, if you could compare the bending moment to the shear force, you'll notice something very very nice that when you always when you have a constant shear force you have a linear bending moment and when you have a linear shear force you have a curved a parabolic bending moment and when you have a parabolic shear force you have a second degree parabola uh, 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 you have sorry a, a, a third polynomial parabola a polynomial of, of degree uh, three parabola as a bending moment so the bending moment is always of a higher degree again why is that because it is the integral of the shear force and again you must know that if in, in case of having concentrated loads you will have constant shear forces in case of having distributed loads uniformly distributed loads shear force will be linearly changing in case of having trape trapezoidal or triangular loads the shear force will be parabolic and again in order to determine the maximum bending moment it is when v equals zero so simply speaking 43.2 over x is equal to 10.8 over 6 minus x this is similarity of triangles so this will give us that x is equal to 4.8 now i could calculate the maximum moment which is 70.2 times 4.8 minus 27 times 6.8 minus 9 times 4.8 times 4.8 over 2 this is 49.68 kip feet and this is the value of my maximum bending moment here thank you